Appreciate you being here. Last night at about 8.05 p.m., the Warren County Sheriff's Office was dispatched to a domestic violence call at 8525 Jonathan Lane, Apartment C, Deerfield Township. Uh, as, it, as we know now, that would have been the first of two domestic violence calls that our office was sent to uh, that was called in by a brother and a father that was complaining about an individual that we now know as Muhammad Legawi, age 19. And that 805 call, Deputy Katie Barnes uh, arrived there to discuss with them the threats that were being made by uh, Muhammad against the brother and father threatening to kill them. She spent almost 40 minutes there talking to these two individuals. Uh, to determine if they were going to file charges and that there would be some arrest made. The two individuals decided that they were not going to cooperate and did not want to see criminal charges filed against Muhammad. So she left. Fifty-nine minutes later, uh, we are dispatched there again for another domestic violence call. And in this call, uh, there was a complaint that Muhammad had now punched his father in the face and that there were continued threats. Deputy Barnes arrived there within three minutes of that call, excuse me, within six minutes of that call. When she arrived, she intentionally parked strategically, and if you, many of you have probably been down in that area, uh, so that she could approach this apartment complex without being seen right away to protect her safety the best that she could. And this apartment happened to be the second floor of this building. And as she gets in front of the steps of this building, it just so happened that Muhammad was standing at the top of those stairs and immediately opens fire. Within a minute, she is calling for help. She is reeling from the shots being fired at her. She is returning fire. And initially, unbeknownst to her, she had already been struck by one of the rounds. The investigation to this point has revealed that uh, not only is she trying to back up to get away, but this individual is now chasing her, continuing to fire shots at her. Uh, she was eventually able to crawl over what would be some type of a sound barrier wall to get to safety, where another deputy had arrived. And at the time he had arrived, he had already been hearing the the shots fired. He was able to get her out of there, take her to safety. What else was going on at the same time as the investigation now reveals is that there were neighbors, obviously with the sounds that were taking place outside, a couple of them come out, thinking at the time that there were firecracks, firecrackers being set off. And to these individuals, two different things happened with these two individuals. One decided to try to keep an eye on who we now know as Muhammad walking around this complex with this gun uh, only to become face to face with him and he was also shot at two different times, was unharmed but nearly shot by this individual. The other thing that happened is this other individual that was out there actually watched this unfold with Deputy Barnes being shot at and trying to get away and the individual chasing her. Muhammad ultimately re returned back to the top of the steps to go back into the apartment. And when the uh, father discovered that he was trying to come back in, they pulled the door shut in hopes to keep him out. Muhammad fires rounds through the door of this apartment, striking his father in the hand. Ultimately, the father comes out to chase him to get a hold of him, and he gets away from him. Uh, the, obviously, the response from our deputy getting shot at, announcing on the radio that she had been shot, uh, and the response from the law enforcement uh, aftermath is just a, a, uh, an incredible response throughout this county and even surrounding counties of, of law enforcement and fire that come down to help set up this perimeter that was ultimately 
uh, set up approximately 1030 last night, you know, shutting down streets, neighborhoods, basically eliminating all movement in hopes to find this individual who was actually still on the loose with this AK-47 assault rifle. There was at least one confirmed sighting, uh, and then there were calls uh, that ultimately, as we're all uh, searching desperately to try to find this individual, uh, it kind of slowed down. We had canine units, we had helicopters, we had resources that you would expect to see in such a manhunt, uh, in such a, a very, very serious situation in a very highly populated, busy area uh, of this county. It wasn't until about 4.30 this morning um, that Muhammad apparently decided to return back to the apartment. And unbeknownst to him, we had people there, uh, obviously stationed there in preparation of conducting our investigation, doing searches of the apartments, the vehicles, uh, and they were able to take him into custody without any incident. So. Uh, Deputy Barnes was immediately transported, uh, many of you may know, to a, a University Hospital in Cincinnati. Um, she was released this morning at about 2.30 to 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, she is going to recover. The uh, round that struck her actually struck her in her lower abdomen. It did not uh, penetrate into the muscle, however, it um, basically split the skin across just underneath the vest where it comes to the top of your belt. The uh, round also damaged her, her inner gun belt, if you will, and um, she had some, some treatment there, uh, but we feel pretty confident that she is going to recover from that and, and uh, be able to come back and, and uh, do what she does. Uh, there is um, the condition on the father we're really not sure of at this point. Is my understanding there may be some surgery necessary on the hand from the shooting. Um, and I'm available for a few questions, some of which I, you know, I'm sure you are well aware I might not be able to answer, but I'll certainly answer as many as I can for you. Deputy Barnes has been here approximately seven and a half years. She actually started in the jail as a corrections officer, and she uh, went through the police academy and came out onto the road as a deputy sheriff in uh, January of 2012. She's a graduate uh, of Mason High School. Yes, somebody else. Uh, no, to my knowledge, she has not fired her weapon in the line of duty before, uh, and um, it's um, as much as you would expect. Very, very scary, uh, and it's early in to see, you know, how, because we're all, we respond differently, how we react differently, how we're going to respond to this coming forward, so it's really difficult to answer. Um, she was tremendous there. Um, she, um, she's a very athletic young lady, and, and um, uh, I'd like to think that some of that was a uh, benefit for her in trying to, to get away from this individual with this assault rifle. Uh, we expect her to recover from this. We really do. She's just a very, very strong um, individual. On the Warren County booking page, it said that he was charged with murder. Can you explain that? Well, the booking page, uh, because, of how, because of how it's viewed from the web, it doesn't actually show the entire wording. Uh, it's, it's an attempted aggravated murder, an attempted murder, uh, phonies assault. Can I ask you a question? Can you respond to the domestic dispute? Is it standard procedure for deputies to arrive by the cell to without waiting for backup alone? Um, it, it's not, I don't know that I would call it standard, but uh, you know, we are a sheriff's office. It's more common in sheriff's office environments uh, than it is probably police departments because this staffing and then the, the larger areas of jurisdiction that we have to cover. Sometimes you can't quite get there, uh, you know, in a timely fashion, but it's not, it is not uncommon in, in, in our environment. What does that say about her, or she was shot, but yet she kept on going to try and apprehend the suspect? Well, I, I think we could all answer that. I mean, she was, uh, 
She was incredible. Um, she was able to handle the, the radio very, very efficiently. Um, I didn't actually hear her on the radio. I'm just standing around uh, late this morning. Once we were able to take this person into custody and listen to the individuals working for her, that it was amazing even to them that she was that strong and that together to alert everybody else that there are shots being fired here and I've been hit. Uh, his, it was really kind of um, uneventful. I mean, he, he surrendered. Uh, there were no issues with him whatsoever. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's been talking to investigators here, uh, so we're hoping to continue to uncover more and more about, you know, the motivation behind this, why, um, but uh, uneventful other than that. We're still working on that now. Is that what you're looking for in the lake? Could be. <laughs> Sheriff, can you describe her, her, her being shot like a, a I, I hate to say a grain being shot, do you think right. it was just simply by luck, maybe she was turning away or did it deflect off or something? Because when you say getting shot by a AK-47, Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it, there, it, there is a lot of luck that went into this. I mean, it, it, we all, most of us might uh, have an understanding of what could happen if this hit her head on. Um, and this, when you talk about a grazing, and, and that word uh, kind of indicate, uh, kind of uh, insinuates that it's minor, but, uh, but it removed the, the entire skin off of her abdomen. You know, about the, probably what you would imagine the width of this bullet was. It just took it right off. Um, you know, it doesn't require any surgery, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it was really just pure luck. I mean, and, and I'd like to think that her uh, abilities to get away might have helped, you know, but, yeah. Well, we don't have the weapon yet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Could you talk about the dispute between uh, Legality and his father and why this all started? Well, I, I don't really know why it started. I mean, the, I, I know what the initial call was, and the initial call was that he was uh, making threats to kill both of them, and, um, and uh, the initial indication was that they were wanting to file criminal charges, and they wanted him out, and they were fearful. and. And, um, and then when it came down to the opportunity to follow through with that, they, they didn't and they wouldn't. And that's, I hate to say this, but sometimes in domestic violence cases that can happen. You know, they kind of back up on what they say and, and, um, uh, and it's a tough situation. Uh, did, they, but, did they own the bear together? Um, I couldn't say that for sure. I, I'm under the impression they may, but I don't, I, I don't, I haven't verified that. No, I believe we haven't we have not uncovered any kind of a criminal arrest record for him as of yet, um, and I believe there's been calls there before, but uh, you know I, I couldn't swear to that at this point either. At the uh, 805 meeting with this family, did they reveal to Deputy Lawrence that he was armed, or did they say with whether he was armed, and could there be uh, some kind of failure to report if you've got a guy who's armed with a an AK-47 and, and not say anything? Um, no, there, we, at this point in the investigation, have nothing to indicate that they knew he was armed and failed to tell us. And in the, the calls to the 911 center, uh, that question was specifically asked if there were any weapons uh, there, and it was indicated no, there weren't. Uh, so point, um, we don't know that, that the brother and, and dad had the knowledge that he had that and, and what he might use it for. Or if they did, they haven't said. That is true. Can you get copies of these 91 calls today? You won't be able to get them today. Um, you'll get them very soon. It's very late, very, very latest Monday. Uh, we are working with the center over there to get those. Um, that's, that's at the very latest. Um, 
I believe we might be able to get the radio communication. Um, if we can't, uh, I would assume probably most of you want those probably in an email format maybe or so we'll see what we can do about that and make sure that we have the appropriate email addresses for everybody. Were you able to recover any rounds from the weapon that you fired? Is that how you know that it was an assault rifle or an AK-47 style? Yes, there were actually uh, at least six spent rounds uh, recovered where he was shooting um, at Deputy Barnes. Um, in further investigation, there were some other spent rounds and some live rounds also found uh, for this uh, AK-47. And Deputy Barnes herself returned fire and fired four times with her service revolver. Do you know anything about witnesses saying they found a clip in the pool of pants? Yeah, her, uh, Deputy Barnes's magazine okay. clip of her gun was recovered. Um, I don't know physically. I wasn't there what he was doing, but the, the brother was clearly scared from the indications on the phone calls um, and was cooperative. I'm not sure that they would probably have guessed this would have actually happened um, with their brother, to, you know, last night. But I don't know if Dan ran after him, why did his brother run after him as well? Couldn't answer that. How old's your brother? I don't know that either. Without looking, I don't know. They're pretty close in age. Did you say their name? I did not say their names. I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure the investigators do, but I don't know the answer to that. Well, she'll be, yes, yeah, she'll be off. Um, not necessarily pending the investigation, it's really pending her well being. You know, we um, we are confident. You know, that the, you know she did everything appropriate, and um, we will do everything we can in our power to make sure that she, she's restored and ready to go to come back to work. Yes, Ezra, can you tell us who the deputy was who helped her get safety? Yes, that was Sergeant Billy Langdon. Uh, we could provide those photos, yes. Sheriff, we've been through some tough situations as sheriff with your deputies and including the loss of a deputy. And so when you get a call, I don't know if you were home or what, you get a call like this, uh, what goes through your mind? I'm sure your heart drops and you, you're kind of worried about the outcome for this deputy. Talk a little bit about that and what your thoughts were last night. Um, well, while I appreciate you know what you're asking, I, I – I do appreciate uh, the position that I am fortunate enough to be in, but we, we, I like to think that we're all going through that. But you're, any of us that are getting that phone call, and there's people in this room that, that got that same phone call and that, you know, series of phone calls one after the other, and um, it's, it's gut-wrenching um, for every, everybody in this room. And, um, you know, l last night was, I think I – Probably said a few expletives when when they called me to tell me before I um, hung up the phone to head down. But um, no, it's it's um, it's it rips you apart, you know. And and the the good news out of this is, you know, we came out a winner in this, and and Deputy Barnes came out a winner in this, and and uh, she's going to be back, one of us. Um, but you know, when you see that response down there last night, and, and we all see the stuff that happens around our country over the last couple of years, and I'm not going to get into that political situation and battle, but the bottom line is, is we, you know, we're, we're here to do a job, and um, we're going to do that to the best of our ability, and we rely upon one another to do that, and, um, and uh, we, we're just a big family. And, you know, you got resources coming from surrounding counties, in county, Columbus, Ohio, federal agencies. Um, it's, it's just it's phenomenal to watch that. It really is. And it, that's the rewarding piece. Even in, a, even in a tough, tough situation, whether you go back to Sergeant Brian Dooley or with Deputy Barnes now, um, that's what we come away with to stay positive on how we do this job on a daily basis. 
discuss in a general sense what it's like. I know domestic are always difficult, have been forever for police officers, but to show up at a domestic and one of the parties involved has an assault on you, that, can you just talk a little bit about that? That's not the way it used to be, is it? Uh, well, we, you know, we're talking after the fact. Nobody knew at the time that he had an assault rifle. Um, we've certainly, and I don't, I know me personally, and, and I know many of our staff has too, it's not uncommon to go to domestic with all kinds of guns. Um, you know, maybe that assault rifle is probably the unusual type of gun that you see in domestic situations, but guns certainly in domestics aren't unusual, never have been unusual. But um, I, I can say that this is probably the first time that I've seen a situation like this. You know, what if, you know started out as a domestic violence uh, maybe in a physical sense, not that that makes it any less serious, but it turns into now a shooting situation that is uh, an attempt to kill uh, a deputy sheriff and uh, an innocent bystander and, you know, his father. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, we see a lot of crazy things, I think, in our society now. It seems like it anyway, that, um, that these things can turn pretty violent pretty quickly and it doesn't seem to matter whether you're a law enforcement officer or you know a civilian it doesn't matter just one last question a lot of the residents and the staff speak now they really appreciated the alert system um, that went out is that new technology that you guys use in the first region or is it just something that's something that's new to us well I, I guess I'd have to know how they're, they got alerted because there are different methods that we use to try to get um, people alerted. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as you know stopping traffic, you know, at, at, you know in neighborhoods and, and not allowing them to leave. And um, you know, there's you know, as we all know, there's social media opportunities out there now that um, that can get some of the population. Not everybody's in it, but you're hitting some of the population that way. It, it, there's just a I think a number of different ways now to just try to get it out as quickly as you can and, and hope that the people understand because some people are going to be pretty frustrated too when they're not able to go from one location to another or even go home for that matter. And that's what we had last night. A lot of people were, you know, trapped out of their homes for, you know, hours. So. Okay. Do you know why the, you know, after the initial call and the incident, the father and brother decided No, I, I don't know specifically what changed their mind. It's a lot of times it's the fi family dynamic. You know, it comes down to it. It's that, you know, ultimately making that decision to send your family member to jail or wherever. And they, how long have they lived there? Have they I, come I don't, up in the, in the neighborhood the whole time? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. So, all right. Well, I appreciate your attendance. We can, um, Chief.